Hello, and welcome to this episode of Happy Baking. In this episode, I'm starting a brand new series called I Bake Someone Their Favorite Pie. And along the way, I hope to teach you lots of pie tips and tricks to help you bake better pies at home, and I'll be sharing some delicious recipes along the way. Today, I will be making a very special guest their favorite pie. It is my dad. If you've never seen my dad before in any of my videos or on social media, just a little spoiler alert, he's the best. But for real, my dad has always supported all of my creative endeavors, and most importantly, he loves food and he loves pie. Sort of like a fun fact or not so fun fact, a lot of people that I am close with, pie is not their favorite thing. And so <gasps> I just sometimes feel like all of these pie efforts can be wasted on people, but not my dad. He loves pie, so I thought he was the perfect guest to kick off this series. So let's hear from the pie-loving man himself. Here's my dad. My name's Steve. I'm Aaron's dad. That's right, you are. Best dad ever! <laughs> you know, I had to think quite a bit about this because I love pie too, but rhubarb is my favorite pie. <sighs> love a rhubarb pie. And why is it your favorite? Well, I, I, because it's, I like the sour. I like the sour. In fact, one of the things I thought a little bit of was maybe gooseberry, but I like the rhubarb best. All right, well, let's get baking and make you some rhubarb pie. First things first, let's go over the rules, which by the way, are entirely self-imposed. In this episode, I am going to make my dad three rhubarb pies, all in the effort of helping him find truly what is his favorite one. But I also thought it would be fun to make three different types of pie. We're gonna make a fruit pie, a custard pie, and a cream pie. All three of them are gonna use the same pie crust, my extra flaky all but a crust, my absolute favorite. Be sure to watch the video on it here on Happy Bacon. You'll love it. Ah. I don't know who that is. The crowd goes wild. And if you want to join my dad and I on the hunt for the perfect rhubarb pie, all three of these recipes are going to be available in the video description below. So be sure to check them out so you can bake along with me. All right, let's get started. Let's get baking. Let's talk about the rhubarb crumb pie. The crust, extra flaky, all butter are baked. The filling. <laughs> I don't know that needs to be that dramatic. The filling is a pre-cooked rhubarb filling. That'll help us get that just right amount of jamminess. And the topping is my all-time favorite streusel crumb topping. It is the best. This is probably the most classic of the rhubarb pies we're gonna make. And we'll start by making the filling. The filling is going to be a pre-cooked rhubarb filling. Now, if you know anything about me, I'm a big believer that pie fillings made with fruit should be pre-cooked. It really helps you achieve that just right level of jamminess to juiciness. You can put raw fruit in a pie, but you're battling so many things. You never know for sure what the juiciness level is. You're working really hard to get a crisp bottom and you might end up with a soggy bottom because of all of that excess moisture. Uh, Pre-cooking the filling allows us to know a little bit about the thickness of the filling before we even bake it, and then baking it allows it to set to that perfect sliceability that I'm always looking for with a fruit pie. So I've got about two pounds or 906 grams of chopped rhubarb here. I'm really not precise about chopping rhubarb for pies because I kind of like having some pieces that are visible and I like some that break down entirely into jammy goodness. So what I'm gonna put in here with this is, this is all of the sugar for the recipe. I'm gonna save some of it to mix in with our cornstarch, but I'm just gonna add a little bit in now, about half a cup, 99 grams, just to get it started to start to pull some of the moisture out of the rhubarb. I'm also gonna add some vanilla paste or vanilla bean if you wanted to have and scrape a vanilla bean. Um, you could also use vanilla extract for this. If you decide to use vanilla extract, I would recommend um, adding it at the very end of cooking because that helps preserve a little of that vanilla flavor a bit better. When we've got physical bean pieces in there, it's sort of nice to cook it in there because it infuses into it. I'm also going to add just a little bit of freshly grated nutmeg. This is something that pairs really well with rhubarb. I'm kind of a big nutmeg fan, so you'll find me using a little bit of nutmeg a lot and just a little bit of fine sea salt. 
I'm gonna toss this on the stove behind me to cook for about five to seven minutes until it starts to get kind of saucy and jammy. While that's cooking, we can just get the final ingredients together for this, which is just the thickening agent. So the thickening agent that we're using for this filling is cornstarch. So I'm going to add it into this bowl. I have a technique that I do where I add the granulated sugar and the thickener together. This works with any kind of thickener you might be using, tapioca, cornstarch, flour, and basically the granules of the sugar help to kind of break up any clumps in the starch itself. And also when it hits a warm mixture, like we're going to add it to here, typically cornstarch and flour tend to clump up when you add them to something that's already hot. By mixing them with sugar first, we are basically allowing it to distribute evenly in a way that's typically clump free. And on top of it, the sugar starts to dissolve in the hot mixture and it just really starts the activation process and the distribution process of that thickener. So I'll just whisk those together till they're nice and combined. And then once my rhubarb has softened and gotten a little bit jammy, we can uh, sprinkle this over the surface and stir to combine and then bring it to a boil. I basically want to see some big fat bubbles bubbling up out of the center of the pot. That's how I know the starch is activated. Now you can let this filling cool however you like in a bowl, even in the pot you cooked it in, but I like to transfer it to a baking sheet. That expanded surface area will help it cool a lot faster so we can get our pie in the oven sooner. Let's make my all-time favorite streusel topping, perfect for cakes and perfect for pies. My favorite streusel is pretty basic and easy to come together. It just has a few ingredients. I'm gonna start with some all-purpose flour and some oats, old-fashioned oats. Light or dark brown sugar, your choice. And one of the kind of special ingredients I put in my streusel is just a few tablespoons of whole wheat flour. Now that whole wheat flour just gives it kind of a lovely nuttiness. I really love it. Also, whole wheat flour hydrates a little differently, so it tends to make a slightly different kind of clump. Just trust me, it's great. I'm gonna add just a little cinnamon, ground cinnamon to it, and also some fine sea salt. Okay, I'm just gonna use my hands to combine these two. You can also use a whisk, a fork, a spatula, but I like to make sure I really break up any of the clumps of the brown sugar. This quantity is perfect for a standard nine inch pie. It also is great for a cake or quick bread. I recently put some of this streusel topping on my regular banana bread recipe. I'd never really done that before. It was so good. So if you feel like streuseling some stuff up, this is the streusel for you. Now I'm going to add some butter to it. And what I wanna do is I wanna cube the butter just going to cut the stick kind of in thirds to make really small, cute little cubes. Turn it over, do the same thing, cut it into three strips, and then I'll just kind of cut down to make cubes. And then we'll add all those cubes into the bowl. First, I'll just toss this to break up those cubes and coat them each in flour, kind of the same way we do when we're mixing pie dough. Then I'm gonna use my hands, or you could use a fork or a pastry cutter to help sort of cut in or rub that fat into the rest of the dry ingredients. And the goal is to keep going until it looks like beautiful moistened crumbs. Everybody loves crumb topping and it's so much less work than a top crust or frosting. So when you need a good streusel, this is the one. We have our cooled filling and our streusel topping, and now we just need to assemble the pie. It is important to let your filling cool down before you put it into the crust, because if it's hot, it can kind of sog out the bottom of your crust, even when it's par-baked. So it's important to let that cool down. We'll just spoon it in. When I put on the streusel topping, I just sort of do it randomly, but I do kind of like to leave pockets uncovered, either kind of at the very edge or even at a couple of spots towards the middle where there just isn't as much dense coverage of streusel. That way, as the pie filling starts to cook, it can bubble up in some of those places. Perfect. This will get baked at 375 degrees until the crust is deeply golden brown and there's some nice browning on the streusel and we should see some of that rhubarb filling bubbling up. It'll take about 45 to 55 minutes. Ooh, and it's 375 Fahrenheit which is 190 degrees Celsius.
let's talk about the rhubarb custard pie. The crust. The crust. Extra flaky all butter, par baked once again. The filling, raw rhubarb. Delicious and very seldom used in rhubarb pies, topped with a super creamy decadent custard. And if you want for a topping, we can finish it with a little powdered sugar. This is such an easy pie to make. In general, custard pies are one of the simplest to whip together. Pun fully intended, because because we're gonna use a whisk. <laughs> but seriously. <laughs> The hardest part really comes in getting them baked just right because you want them to set just perfectly. Overbaked custards can be kind of rubbery. But this has sort of another advantage, which is that we get to use raw rhubarb. We don't have to cook any rhubarb. We don't have to break it down at all. We can literally just put it into the pie shell and then pour the custard over top. Rhubarb and custard are such a delicious combination together. And I think this pie is really, really special. And best of all, it's really easy. So if you're scared of baking pie, this might be the rhubarb pie for you. I'm gonna start with my par baked pie crust. And I'm just gonna put about 12 ounces, 340 grams of sliced rhubarb into the center. While it doesn't really need to be precise, I like to spread it into a fairly even layer just because I want everyone to have some rhubarb in each bite. We're gonna start with four large eggs. So I've got my four eggs in there. Now I'm gonna add a cup of milk. <laughs> we gotta switch to another bowl. <laughs> But for real, one reason when you're making a custard pie that you want plenty of whisking room is you really want those eggs to break up. And I was just noticing that there were like pieces of yolk still floating in there. That's when I made the decision ultimately. Let's add in the cream. We'll add in our granulated sugar. I'm also going to add some vanilla bean paste, some fine sea salt, and a little bit of freshly grated nutmeg. Beautiful. Once all of the ingredients are uniformly combined, we're just going to pour it over our rhubarb. And I kind of like to try to pour it so that each piece of rhubarb, even if it ends up sticking up out of the top of the custard, has a little coating of custard. It just helps with the baking process, helps that rhubarb get soft in the oven, helps keep everything uniform. We'll bake this pie at 350 degrees until the custard is set around the outside edge, but still slightly jiggly in the center. You'll be able to see that the rhubarb has visibly softened. It's gonna take about 45 to 55 minutes. Once the pie comes out, you wanna cool it completely to room temperature. And actually room temperature is my preferred temperature for serving this pie, so you can slice it as soon as it's cooled. If you wanna store your pie, store it in the refrigerator for up to three days and keep it loosely covered on the surface. Let's talk about the rhubarb cream pie. The crust. Extra flaky all butter. Blind baked, because this is a cold set pie. For the filling, we've got two. We have a delicious tangy rhubarb jam and a super creamy mascarpone cream filling. And there is no topping. <laughs> One of our two fillings for this rhubarb cream pie is essentially a rhubarb jam, but with a few important distinctions. Unlike most jam, it will be sweetened significantly less. You just don't need that level of sugar if you're not planning to preserve the jam long-term, and we wanna retain some of that sourness of the rhubarb. We're also going to reduce this jam so that it has a thicker consistency. That way we can layer it easier with the cream filling. I've got 454 grams or a pound of chopped rhubarb in my pot here. And to it, I'm going to add some lemon juice. I'm also gonna add three quarters of cup or 150 grams of granulated sugar, a pinch or two of fine sea salt, and some vanilla bean paste. Look at this honkin' vanilla bean paste I have. 32 fluid ounces. And we'll just measure it with our heart here. Rhubarb and vanilla are a match made in heaven, so I definitely don't wanna skimp on the vanilla in this jam. I'm gonna stir it all together and the sugar will start to pull moisture out of the rhubarb and start to soften it. We basically wanna cook this until the rhubarb has pretty much broken down. What I mean by broken down is you should be able to mash it with your spatula and it will turn into a jam. 
Now, this jam is great just as it is. When we're done cooking, that rhubarb will be soft enough that we'll have a nice thick jam. So if you want chunks or visible pieces of rhubarb in your pie, you can leave it just like that. Because this is a cream pie and it has like a lovely creamy texture all the way through, I kind of like to puree it in a blender or with an immersion blender just to get it extra smooth, but the choice is really up to you. This is such an easy pie that pureeing it is definitely one extra step and a few extra dishes. So if you feel like skipping it, I totally understand. I love rhubarb so much. And so when dad said it was his favorite, I really wanted to make him a rhubarb cream pie. I'm pretty sure he's never had one before. It's a little more unusual, but my dad loves cold set pies. Like I was half expecting him to say that his favorite pie was coconut cream. So this is kind of the best of both worlds because he'll get a little bit of cream pie deliciousness, but he'll also get that sour rhubarb flavor. And I also think that cold set pies as a category are especially fun to make. All levels of pie bakers can make cold set pies. Um, they're great for the summer because the only thing that has to bake is the crust, which happens pretty quickly. So you don't have to have your oven on as long. So there's just so many things to love about cold set pies, especially the fact that they always pass the sturdy pie challenge. I posted a preview of this particular pie on my social media and everyone went nuts for it. So I'm so excited to be sharing the recipe now. Okay, the rhubarb is soft enough that I can mash it with my spatula. And even after it's soft enough that I pretty much made a jammy puree, I wanna keep cooking it a little bit longer. Like I mentioned, I wanna reduce it, remove some of that additional moisture content, just so it is that perfect consistency in the pie. I wanna keep stirring during that time because when you're reducing something, especially a fruit filling and especially something with sugar, it can be prone to sticking. So stir it, kind of babysit it. It's looking pretty good. I'm just gonna tilt it here in my pot and give it a little puree. Pureeing is gonna thicken it quite a bit too because more of those fibers are gonna be incorporated. It's gonna make the mixture thicker. What I'm looking for in the consistency is that it kind of falls in a sheet like that. See how when it falls off, it's not just falling off like in a drip. See how it slows and goes that term is used in preserves, jams, and jelly making to kind of show that it's thickened enough, that it's set enough. So even though we're not making a jam jelly exactly like that here, we're using a similar form of doneness to make sure it doesn't have too much water left in it. It's not dripping, it's falling off in a sheet. To cool our jam off a little bit faster, I'm just gonna pour it onto a small baking sheet. That expanded surface area is gonna help it cool down a lot faster. The vanilla mascarpone cream filling for this pie is so delicious and so quick and easy. It's basically as easy as making whipped cream. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with 10 ounces or 285 grams of mascarpone cheese. I'm gonna put it into my mixer bowl fitted with the whip attachment, along with our sugar. This is just half a cup or 99 grams of sugar. Now I'm gonna whip this on kind of medium speed just to incorporate those two ingredients. This is actually a place you can kind of over whip just the cheese. It can get kind of grainy or gritty if you whip it too long. So once most of the sugar is combined, we're just gonna let it go. I'm gonna add my pinch of fine sea salt and I'm also going to add some vanilla paste with my heart. Ooh, my heart is feeling generous today. All right, now with the mixer running, I'm gonna add this cold, heavy cream in kind of a slow, steady stream and let it start mixing it. At first, it's gonna look a little clumpy because the cheese is cold and the cream is cold, but as the cream starts to whip, those clumps of the cheese will get worked out. Um, so just be sure to stop every now and then and give it a good scrape. You can see how beautiful and thick this got. It's going to be the perfect cream filling. I'm gonna kind of clean off my work surface here because we're already ready to fill this pie. We do wanna make sure our jam is completely cool. And there's two different ways we can put this cream filling into the pie. You can just kind of eyeball it and spread it with a spatula, but because the jam is a softer consistency, the easiest way to add it is by piping it, in my opinion. It doesn't need to be precise, but what it does is it also creates these ridges, and then as we layer, the jam kind of falls into those ridges and it gives it the most beautiful ripple effect when sliced. It looks kind of striped, kind of swirly. 
It's super cool and it doesn't take that much extra effort. So I'm gonna put it in a pastry bag and we'll get piping. I'm gonna start by adding about a third of the total filling because there's going to be three layers of each filling. So you can just eyeball this, you don't have to be precise. And I'm cutting a pretty wide opening from the tip, about an inch. You could also use a large round tip, but again, a tip isn't really necessary here. I'm just gonna go ahead and pipe rings in my blind baked crust to create an even layer of filling. Then you're gonna use about a third of the jam in this layer, and I'll just spread it into an even layer over the surface. It'll be a pretty thin layer, but remember, we're gonna have lots of the layers throughout, so don't worry, you'll get your rhubarb in. The finished pie is so pretty, but it's gonna be even prettier when we slice it. But first, it needs to be refrigerated for two hours to help all those layers set. And you can actually refrigerate it for up to three days, and that includes the leftovers too. Remember, the ideal serving temperature for this pie is chilled from the fridge, so keep it in the fridge until you're ready to slice and serve. Okay, this one is a rhubarb custard pie. Ah. It's really, really good. It's just kind of like a classic custard and then you put the rhubarb into the center and pour the custard over it. We have a lot of pie to taste, so I'll cut you a kind tasting portion. Okay. okay, so kind of softly set custard and a lot of rhubarb. Like you fill the whole crust with rhubarb first. Mm. Well, I love custard. And it's like that sourness of rhubarb with creamy custard. A lot of people don't know that rhubarb's nickname is pie plant. Huh. And the reason for that is that it sets really well. Like a lot of fruit is runny and juicy, mm -hmm. but rhubarb isn't. So this is, you couldn't do this with just any fruit. And it's not really a fruit, I guess. It's a root, what is it? <laughs> it's quite tasty. I've right. never had anything like that before. That was the plan. <laughs> okay, let's get another one. This one is a brand new invention. I always wondered why they don't make a cream pie that's rhubarb mm -hmm. because again, that sourness, the creaminess, and also it's such a beautiful color. And this one is cool because it will slice really cleanly. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that cool? Yeah. Okay, it's hard to have a small slice of this one because that's how delicious it is, but we'll do our best. And what I think you'll like about this one is it still has juiciness of rhubarb. You know, it's not the mm. other one. It's more like experiencing the rhubarb on its own. Mmm. Wow. I, I would never have thought of something <laughs> like this for rhubarb. It's good. And I like the texture, the crispy crust, with all that creaminess. Mm -hmm. mm. So good. When you ask what kind of favorite, custard pies and stuff I really like, but and so this is kind of a treat. It's both the rhubarb and the custard. Well, it? and I, I know that one you like is coconut cream, which is yeah. still a different kind of custard than this is. Yeah. This custard actually has um, mascarpone cheese in it. Mm. So it's like kind of a middle ground between like inside of a tiramisu, <laughs> but with the sourness. I, I'm, I'm obsessed mm. with this one and the way that it looks. I mean, it's a stunner. It is gorgeous. This one is the most classic rhubarb pie with a crumb topping. And actually, a lot of people, I feel like, don't understand this because they don't really know rhubarb, but rhubarb is a great pie filling for beginners because it just sets so beautifully every time. So you can always get this really nice slice, but it also stays juicy. I mean, look at that. I lost some of your streusel, but don't worry, I will rescue it. Delicious. <laughs> is that one your favorite? This is a close call. I just know this is the most classic. Like this is probably what you were thinking of I'd make when... This is what I thought you would make. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you had to choose between the three, which would be your favorite rhubarb <laughs> pie? 
It's okay to say you can't choose. <laughs> Am I going to a desert island? Is that the... <laughs> I'd pick that one first. I, the classic. Yes. And my dad's a classic. And I would so. pick that one second. Very close second. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That's, that's very delicious though. It is. And it's hard when there's three. Yeah. My grandma, his mom loved rhubarb. And a lot of people do rhubarb with strawberry because they're in season at the same time. But they need to celebrate the pure beauty of just the rhubarb because yeah. it's so sour and tangy and just, it's so good all on That's its own. It's delicious. Okay, well, I'm glad you liked them. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess if you hadn't liked them, this would be a very awkward episode. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me for this episode of Happy Baking, where I made my dad his favorite pie, well, actually three of them, rhubarb pie. And along the way, I hope I taught you some of why we both love this particular pie so much. So the recipes are in the video description below. And until next time, wishing you lots of happy baking. And happy eating. <laughs> you see all these flakes on the cutting board? Mm -hmm. Do you know what I say on Instagram when something's really flaky? Mm -hmm. I call it flaky AF. Do you know what the AF stands for? Can you guess? No. <laughs> <laughs> flaky AF? Yeah, so flaky as fuck.